Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Sastri Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. This is part 3 of section 2.3 Spanish reconfiguration of chapter 2 of CCNA semester 3. Catalyst 2960 default configuration. So by default the Spanish tree is enabled on VLAN 1. Spanish tree mode is per VLAN Spanish tree plus. Spanish tree priority default on Catalyst 2960, well pretty much in every Catalyst switch, is 32768. Spanish tree port priority configurable on per interface basis as 128. Spanish tree port cost configurable again on per interface basis default is for 1 gig is 4 for 100 mbps is 19 for 10 mbps is 100 or uh, we don't have it here but it's for 10 gig is 2 Spanish tree vlan port priority is 128 Spanish tree vlan port cost again vlan port cost again for 1000 or 1 gig is 4 100 mb for uh, is 19 and Spanish tree timers hello time is every two seconds forward delay timers which is learning listening and learning 15 seconds maximum age time is 20 seconds and transmit hold count is 6 BPDUs configuring and verifying bridge ID from when under an administrator wants a specific switch to become a root bridge the bridge priority value must be adjusted to ensure it's lower than the bridge priority value of all other switches on the network. So we said by default the bridge priority or is 32768. So for you to make sure that that one is taken into account rather than the MAC address, you need to change the bridge priority. There are two different methods to configure the bridge priority value on Cisco Catalyst switches. First method is to ensure that the switch has the lowest bridge priority value, use the Spanish tree VLAN, then VLAN ID root primary, command in global configuration mode. The priority for the switch is set to predefined value of 24,576 or to the highest uh, multiple of 4,096 less than the lowest bridges priority detect on the network. Right, so the Spanish tree VLAN, VLAN ID root primary this command here it's it's like a macro which will find out what is the root bridge what is the root priority of the root bridge now and it will lower it by 4096 if it's left by default if all the switches that have the priority by default set to 32768 then it's going to go and lower the priority to 24576 the second method in alternate root bridges desired, oh, this is for the secondary root bridge or backup root bridge. So you type Spanish tree VLAN, VLAN ID root secondary. So what this is going to do is going to run a macro, which is going to reset the priority to 28672. Or find out what is the root bridge, I just increase it by 4096. This will ensure you the the switch the, the root bridge fails this switch will become the next root bridge this assumes the rest of the switches in the network have the default 32768 priority value defined method two is when which is why i prefer this method anyway you're a bit more in control it's configure configuring the bridge priority value in the using the spanish tree vlan and then vlan id and the priority and then the value global configuration mode so here you are you are setting yourself what is going to be the priority instead of leaving it by you know switch uh, running the macro this command gives more granular control over the bridge priority value the priority value is configurable in increments of 4096 and you can type anything between 0 and 64440 to verify the bridge priority of the switch use the show Spanish tree command. Port fast and BPDU guard. Port fast is a Cisco feature for per VLAN Spanish tree plus environment. So in exa example, port fast, you want to enable on any link 
that is connected to any device, for example, or a camera or TV or anything. These ones are not going to create a loop. Since they're not going to create a loop, why should it be running the spanning tree in there? So spanning tree, the port fast, it will transition the port immediately from the blocking to forwarding, which is not, the spanning tree is not running pretty much there because they're not going to create a loop. When a switch port is configured with the port fast, the, the port transition from blocking to forwarding state immediately, bypassing the usual 802.1D spanning tree protocol transmission, transition states, the listening and learning states. You can use port fast on an access port to allow the end devices to connect to the network immediately rather than wait for the timers. Access ports are ports which are connected to a single workstation or to a server. For example, these are their access port. You don't want those ports to go through the timers and to move on to listening, learning, is there going to be a loop or not. These, they go straight from blocking into forwarding. The guard, BPD guard, in a valid port fast configuration, BPD should never be received because that would indicate that another bridge or switch is connected to that port, potentially causing a spanning tree loop. So if I, can, if I make a, a port fast somewhere, um, what I'm saying is there's never going to be a switch connected to it. So if there's never going to be a switch connected to it, then you never should have a BPDU arriving on that port. So for that reason, we enable the BPDU guard as well. Cisco switches supports a feature called BPDU guard. When it, when it is enabled, the BPDU guard puts the port in error disabled state in receipt of BPDUs. This will effectively shut down the port. The BPD guard feature provides a secure response to invalid configuration because you must manually put the interface back into a service. Per VLAN spanning tree plus load balancing, for example, if we do, we can load balance for some VLANs, this switch will be the root bridge, for some other VLANs will be the secondary root bridge and so on. So this command forces the switch 3 to be the primary root bridge for VLAN 20. So on switch 3, global configuration mode, we say spanning tree, VLAN 20, root, primary. Then we say spanning tree, VLAN 10, root, secondary. So we can see that this switch 3 for VLAN 10 is a secondary switch, for VLAN 30 is a primary switch or the root bridge. Switch 1, it's the other way around. So for VLAN 10 is a root bridge, and for VLAN 20 is a secondary root bridge. Spanning tree mode, Rapid Per VLAN Spanning Tree Plus is a Cisco implementation of Rapid Spanning Tree protocol. Um, it supports a Rapid Spanning Tree on Per VLAN basis. A Rapid Per VLAN Spanning Tree command con controls the configuration of VLAN Spanning Tree instance. A Spanning Tree instance is created when an interface is assigned to VLAN and is removed when, at le at last, when the last interface is moved to another VLAN. So a new spanning tree instance is created when we have a VLAN, interface assigned to VLAN. And the instance will be removed if all the interfaces, they don't belong to that VLAN anymore. But you can enable it as well. You can configure a spanning tree protocol switch on a port parameter before a spanning tree instance is created. So the command here, you have to say spanning tree mode, tell it what mode is it. Go to the interface and say spanning tree link type point to point. So we enable in the spanning tree, it doesn't matter what VLAN does this interface belongs to. Analyzing the spanning tree topology, to analyze the spanning tree protocol topology follows these steps. So first, we need to discover the layer two topology and we use the command well, Cisco proprietary protocol, Cisco discovery protocol, show CDP neighbors, right? If we don't want to use the Cisco proprietary, there's uh, LLCP as well for the open standard and then find out the topology. After we discover the topology, we need to find know the knowledge of ourselves to know where should be the root bridge and find out the root bridge. Use the show spanning tree command to determine which switch is the root bridge. Use the show spanning tree VLAN command on all switches to find out the which ports are in blocking or forwarding state and confirm you confirm your expected results. In many networks, the optimal spanning tree protocol to 
topology is determined as part of the network design and then implemented throughout through manipulation of Spanish tree priority and the cost values. Situation may occur where Spanish tree was not considered in the um, in the network design and implementation, or it was considered or implemented before the network underwent significant growth and change. In such situation, it is important to know how to analyze the actual Spanish tree protocol to topology in the operational network. A big part of the troubleshooting consists of comparing the actual state of the network against the expected state of the network and spotting the difference to gather clues about the troubleshooting problem. Overview is Spanish tree status. So this is the only command to see what pretty much this command tells you everything. You know, what's running in the Spanish tree. Show Spanish tree and then VLAN, whatever VLAN. Now I'm going to do a demonstration, uh, follow the link to see the demonstration on configuring a rapid per VLAN Spanish tree, port fast and BPD guard. But very, very quickly here, I'm going to do it on the packet tracer as well. So um, I'm going to open, actually I'm going to open brand new packet tracer. So file new, no, I don't want to save this. There, brand new. Okay, so I'm going to grab one switch. So 2960 here and bring it one PC here, right. Uh, connect this PC to a switch. Right, let me put the lights back on. So preferences, shoulder lights. Okay, so straight through cable, PC zero, fast ethernet zero, connected to switch, FA01. Can you see now the port is transitioning? It's going, black, you see the orange? It's going from blocking, listening, learning, and then it will move on to forward, right? So that's a problem there yeah? because it's, it's going to be about between 30 to 50 seconds. It's going to until it starts forward. Now these PCs these days, the PC can be up for like less than two three seconds. Well, that's a very very fast PC. Well, anyway, six seconds ten seconds it's up, running and waiting for DHCP, wanting the IP address and so on. So if 50 seconds you delay that PC, that PC is going to start, I don't know, running some kind of like a, a troubleshooting uh, apps or so on. Okay, so let me just unplug it and plug it back in and go through the states as well. So if I run, let's see here, if I just move this to right, like that. And this two, I'll just move them to the left. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me just enable config T, uh, host name, let's give it a name, that's not the one. And show spanning tree VLAN 1. Right, we have one port, FA01, and it's forward. Right, so let me just unplug it. Okay, if I can just minimize it so I can both see them in one window. Okay, unplug this. See, the port's gone down. Unplug it back. The port's gone up. So if I say show spanner tree, now I see it's going through listening. That's why it's orange here. It's dead listening mode. That's why it's still orange. Uh, still listen. Right. Now it's learning. So we move, we move on from listening to learning. And still learning. Still learning. And now we're forward. So you can see this long time. So with that. We can do, uh, we go to that interface, so interface FA01 and span entry port fast. Right. Now, this message is a warning message. It says to you, okay, make sure there's not a switch going to be connected to it or a hub or concentrate. The thing is that they're going to create a loop, yeah? Because that's a potentially a big brick problem. And that's why it says use it with a caution. Right. Port fast has been configured on fast Ethernet 01. 
but will only have an effect when an interface is in non trunking mode. So, it's an access port because it's connected to this PC. So, we saw it earlier. So, it was going through orange, it was saving on listening and learning and so on. So, let me unplug it and plug it back on and let's see it now. So, um, unplug, plug, and it's all it's green right away. And do your show spanning tree with that one. And it's forwarding right away. So, as soon as I plug the PC to it, it's forwarding. It doesn't go through the states. But it's important that we make sure there's only PC going to be connected to it. Because if there's a switch or a hub or something, it's going to create a loop. Right? So, for that reason, we need to go to the same port, FA01, and say spanning tree, BPDU, guard, enable. With the guard enable. Uh, let me spell that correct. Enable. So spanning tree BPDU guard enable, which says that if I connect a PC, uh, a hub here or a switch or something, uh, you should guard. There should not be a BPDU using it. Okay, enter. Now, if I do show run, okay, then here you can see. The spanning tree BPD guard enabled and port fast is enabled as well. So if I connect a, a switch here, let's see if I can connect a switch. Well, I can't bring it. I was going to put both. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me, let me connect the switch, another switch. Right? So unplug it from here. And plug it to the switch. You can see that it's come down, and I'm going to try and plug it to FA01 on the switch. You see the port is red, which means that that's it. The port is not enabled. So show interface FA01, and you can see the port has been disabled. It's down, it's not working, and it's been disabled. The reason is because this switch is sending BPDUs, and this port says, well, I've got VPD guard enabled, so you can't be sending VPDUs. So if I unplug it and plug the PC, the port is enabled. So I'll show interface FA01 and it is connected up. So you can see that it's working now. The, the port fast, the port is transitioned automatically from blocking into forwarding, it's not going through the states. And we have a VPD guard there as well, enabled. As soon as we are connecting the switch, it's blocking it. Okay, but follow the link if you want to see a bit more information about building a switch network um, with a redundant. No, no. Uh, where are we? Sorry. Yeah, that's it. Configuring a rapid per VLAN spanning tree plus port fast and BPD guard. Rapid per VLAN spanning tree, you have just to tell the mode what mode you are running. Yeah, so, so if I go here, uh, config the spanning tree, spanning tree, and then mode either per VLAN, per VLAN spanning tree. Or rapid per VLAN. So you can see that packet tracer only supports those two per VLAN and rapid per VLAN spanning tree. So say say that we do it for rapid per VLAN spanning tree and, and then show spanning tree VLAN 1. You can see the mode you are running, it's rapid spanning tree protocol. Okay. But uh, it's the best if we actually see it on the physical devices having this. So follow the link. And thank you very much for watching. This has been Astrid Krasnici as explaining or demonstrating you on the this part of the chapter two.